And I came up with the concept of an international cultural and trade center for the city of Oakland, California, as it's related to what? The shipping business and the crossroads of travel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this was a growth city, et cetera. Wow, an international cultural and trade center. And that would be the name. That would be the goal objective of me running for mayor of Oakland. And he allowed women in color. So what, me running for mayor of Oakland? So I took my transit, and I stood out in the middle of that empty land out there owned by the city government of Oakland, and I talked to the camera about the DC, and we could put an international cultural and trade center in this particular area. We will have pavilions, we will have dance, we, we, we will have restaurants. We'll start off with the first 20 or 30 restaurants, dining, and entertainment. 50% will be dining and entertainment from ethnic groups and people all across the United States. And the other 50% will be people from international cultures from Africa and different other places, et cetera. And they cuisine, et cetera, and dining. I says, and this is what we want to do for the international culture. I says, and then we'll have shops. We'll have all kinds of other things there, et cetera. And I will take all these shops, most of these shops, you know, people have things to sell, et cetera. And I will see to it that nonprofit entity groups get 50% of these shops. Ah, uh, nonprofit entity groups have programs. They need income and money. They need grants, okay? But say they own a shop and bang, say, and out of that they pay people their, their natural wage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you if if, if you got ten thousand dollars, five thousand dollars and profits, what we call profits, come out. It goes into the treasury of that nonprofit entity, and that nonprofit entity is doing some other service framework in the community. You see what I mean? So, this is my concept, and it's called evolving greater community control of economic frameworks that retail and produce services and goods. This is what that was all about when I ran for mayor of Oakland. It was a hell of a campaign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's like when you, when you ran for mayor, like you think that you didn't win because um, you was running your career, or like is it because like part of Wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. What are you, what are you asking? You, I, I can't oh, hear you. Man. So like you ran for mayor of Oakland, and like you didn't win, like do you think it's because like you wasn't ready yet as a leader, or like, was it because the powers that be like didn't want you to be um, mayor? No. No? I was, man, I was more than ready. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in jail, a political prisoner, for two years. I won the political cases. I was beat up in prison and jailed by who? By guards. You know, they tried to terrorize me, you know, out of existence. No, I was more than ready. My skills, my abilities, etc. boom, boom, boom. My ability to designate, shoot, running for mayor, I was on time. The black mayor who ran four years earlier for me because nobody had organized the city, because nobody had organized the city before, nobody had built a political electoral thing before, he only got 14% of the vote in Oakland running for mayor. When I came along, we organized that whole community. We did voter registration to the tune of 20,000 people in Oakland, California. Oh. 20,000 people over a two year period. How did you do that? We had the troops, the people. Mm -hmm. I made voter registrars out of my party members, out of my other friends, all my white left radical friends, all my Chicano Mexican American brothers and friends. Well, and that's what we did. And I'm talking about we registered people to vote. And one time, you kicked, and one time in the middle of the voter registration thing, we came and Oakland Auditorium holds 7,000 people. How do we do that? Well, I gotta teach you brothers and sisters. Let's go, now. <laughs> Let's go. I'm gonna teach you something. And I'm just gonna tell you what I did. So we gotta have big time voter registration. We already got people doing voter registrar, all right? In the community here and there, blah, blah, blah. And they hit five a day here. Some guy, some guy, he's going, and they never turn it into a voter register. But we decided to get, I said, we're going to give away 10,000 bags of groceries at the open auditorium. What? I said, we're going to give away 10,000 bags of groceries at the open auditorium. What? <laughs> he said, you can't do that. I said, you ain't stay out of this. You do not know how to organize. 
You know what I mean? I know how to organize. We're going to give away 10,000 full bags of groceries with a chicken in every bag. I want a three and a half, four pound chicken in every bag. What? I says, yes, that's what. So I got all my little coordinators together. Not the little coordinators, these are brothers and sisters. They were good. John Kelly, she was a mathematician. William Roberts, they were mathematicians. But we didn't have no computers. Most we had was slide rules. You see what I mean? I love math. I always got A's in math. I mean, right on up to the quadratic form and the application of it. Boom, 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 boom. And later I went, later in getting my, not trying to knock off my BA, I retook that college math. And the application of the quadratic form in terms of probability theory. This is years later. But I'm trying to show you something here. 10,000 bags of groceries. How many seats are in the open auditorium? 7,000 seats. So I call a press conference at St. Augustine's Church. St. Augustine's Church was the church that uh, had sponsored our um, free breakfast programs in the early days that became popular. And I had some long tables, eight foot long tables, and I had chickens in the cellophane bag, one, two, three, four, and then I had an example of a 1,400 cubic inch bag, a 1,400 cubic inch bag, et cetera. Boom, 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 and I held the chickens up. I had about six cameras from television stations and stuff. You know, some, some radio people and some press people. So I said to the other people, you know, I said, brothers and sisters, this is it. I'm holding these two chickens. A fat, healthy, three to four pound chicken in every bag. We will give away 10,000 bags of groceries and we will register people to vote at the open auditorium, blah, 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 big press conference. Now, two and a half months before we would do this, and what date we was gonna hand this on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Boom. Behind the scene, a month later, and you know, we had a few people who would, if they hear some stuff going on in the mayor's office about us, you know, sometimes they leak information to us. And they told me that after I announced that, that the mayor, I said, whatever, okay, we'll do four or five pounds of potatoes. I sent the coordinators out, they met with me a week later. John, we've been everywhere, man. And we all the produce outlets in Frisco, and there ain't nobody got no 40,000 pounds of potatoes or potatoes for this stuff. We're gonna have to call this thing off. I said, uh-uh, I don't wanna hear that from you. Another one come in, ain't nobody got this much peak puff wheat. That's all I got. We got to call this off, we can't. I said, don't sit up there and talk crap to me. Now, what kind of organizers are you? I said, have you ever heard of a place called Idaho? They got potatoes up there. You go see the treasury, Get your rental cars, whatever you said you gotta do. We got money in funds, because Marlon Brandon was giving us big money. Boom, 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 boom. I says, boom, and get your butts up there to Idaho. Now, you better take your rifles with you and put them in the trunk. I said, because you got some hardcore right wing races up there. Now, don't go up there flashing no damn guns. You up there for business to try to get a contract for potatoes to be delivered. Boom, 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 on a cheap scale. Boom, boom, boom. So don't talk that talk to me. You can't find no damn potatoes. You got them in Idaho. They grow all kind of potatoes up in that son of a gun. What's wrong? <laughs> the other brother, well, I went out to the co-op place, and he said they ain't never got no 10,000 bags of puff wheat. I said, well, where does he get his puff wheat, brother? <laughs> well, I said, call him up. I said, no, you call him up right now. We went on this one. He come back. He said he'd get it from the Quaker Puff Wheat coming in Stockton. I said, well, get out to Stockton and give me some Puff Wheat. You can talk that crap to me. <laughs> man, we put that program together. When they went to deal with the chickens, I wanted chickens up to four pounds. And they got what they did. This was Foster Farms, the same one today. Way back there. I'll never forget that. These guys got these big sheds and levels of chickens. And you come out and you can sit on a level and there's hundreds of thousands of chickens on this level, this level, this level, level, and they're all eating. And I says, how do you gauge the poundage? He hit the lights and turned them off 
and all these 10,000 chickens stopped eating. They wouldn't eat with the lights off. Turn the lights off. And they all go back. All 10,000 stuck out. I oh my God. So, I mean, it was a lot. That was something. My point is, I want these chickens and I want them to deliver how? So we want freezer trucks to keep them at 32 degrees, right? Maybe this is giving people no small chickens. You see what I'm getting at? 10,000 bags of groceries. Then I got my wife, bless her. She had a great voice. And she had put her on KDIA radio. And the Black Panther Party will be giving away 10,000 bags of groceries. Register to vote. We'll be giving away sickle cell anemia tests, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Boom, we sit there. We built and made our own ads. We sit there and walk through those radio ads. You see, and this, when, when young brothers and sisters and people know what to do, they know how to they do it. It's just an investigative process. He or she who assumes without investigation nine times out of ten is wrong. Because you haven't investigated to see what it really is. Mm. And that's what it's about. You have to have that understanding that attitude. You're going to keep investigating. Yeah, uh, Mr. Seal, so when young people today learn about all the challenges that we face, mm -hmm. it may seem very daunting and it'll make people feel helpless. And what advice can you give to young people? Daunting? I'm trying to get you to, to get the meaning of your question again. It, it, like, when we is see it the same with daunting to the youth or daunting? To, or to when the I'm youth. talking, is daunting to them because they don't know how like to? When we, figure, when we, when we see time. how much is wrong, Today and we want to fix it, but it's oh, just being overwhelmed. Okay. Yeah, like we it, we almost feel helpless sometimes. But what advice can you 